What is happening, ladies and gentlemen? Today I am excited to share my review of the Flare Espresso Maker, specifically the Signature Plus model. Now, there are two different generations of the Flare. There's the Classic and now the Signature. So again, this is the Flare Signature Plus, and let's see what comes inside the box. So you have your carrying case, which comes standard with all flare models. It is this nice black and red color scheme, a couple of zippers, and pretty sturdy. And then the only other thing that comes in the box is the brewing guide itself. And in James Hoffman's review, he actually compared this to the safety card that you would find on an airplane. And I can't say that I disagree with him. I mean, look at this thing. So here's a quick look at it. You can see there's quite a few steps, but if we break them down one by one, it's actually not that complicated. And then some warranty information. And I hear that they have pretty good support. So let's take a look at what comes inside the box or the carrying case, I should say. So first off, we have this plastic drip tray. And on the latest Signature Pro model, you can get a stainless steel version. We also have a screw that you can, or a bolt and washer they describe it as, that you can use to permanently attach the base to the lever. And then this is the dosing cup slash tamper if you choose to use that instead of the included tamper or if you only get the solo model. This is the funnel, which you use to prevent making a major mess when grinding your coffee. The stainless steel tamper, which is nice and hefty. And then you have the porta filter or brew head itself, which consists of about four, well, five different parts. And I'll show you those later. Here's just a return sticker in case you have any issues and you would have fixed that on the outside of your case or the box. And this is the screen, which is actually the fourth part of the porta filter and a very important part, so try your best not to lose it. And then of course, the beautiful lever. This is the chrome version. Black would of course look black and have that red instead of the bronze. And then here's the base. And that is everything. By the way, I'm sorry for the shaky camera. That is the last time I ever put a tripod on top of a table. All right, so with all the parts laid out here, I think it's time for a brew demo. I'm going to walk us through each step in the process so we can pull a nice shot of espresso. Step one is to boil some water and insert the lever into the base, like so. In step three, we are going to take apart the brewing head, which consists of four parts. We have the two-in-one porta filter right here, which allows you to do a bottomless option or just the pressurized option. So I just removed that there. Then we have the filter basket itself. This is where we'll add about 15 to 17 grams of ground coffee. And then finally the piston, which is gonna actually be creating the pressure through the cylinder here. And then last but not least, the cylinder itself, which you can see has a rubber sleeve so you don't burn your hand while preheating the cylinder. Next, we're gonna to wanna to dose out our coffee, about 15 to 17 grams of finely ground coffee. Of course, you can use the included dosing cup, like so. Or you can cut corners like me, tear your filter basket with the funnel attached, and just grind directly into your filter basket. Now, one important thing to note here about step five, since I already completed it here, is that you do want to be using a good quality burr grinder. And typically these run for at least $200. Okay, so we've pretty much done steps five, six, and seven. Our ground coffee is in our filter basket, and now it's time to tamp. So you can use the included doser slash tamper or the stainless steel tamper, which I'm gonna use here if you have it. Notice also that on the initial tamp, I am leaving the funnel 
attach to the filter basket. I just like to do this because A, the tamper fits perfectly within the funnel and it also prevents a bit of a mess and spill over the side of the filter basket. Step nine is relatively simple. You're basically gonna take your screen and place it flush with the top of the portafilter. So on top of your tamped ground coffee, and you can choose to attach it to the base if you want. I personally do this off the base usually. Okay, so step 10 is where I think things kind of take a weird direction. The instructions call for inverting the cylinder in a sink or bowl and preheating with boiled water. Now, the only problem with this, as you'll see, is that there's not really a, a good way to plug the cylinder, even when it's sitting flush with the bottom of a sink or, or the bottom of a bowl, it's not going to prevent water from slipping out the bottom. So what I've done, or eventually learned I needed to do, was to actually insert the piston into the cylinder and preheat like this. Step 11 is relatively straightforward, but still possible to screw up. So I'm removing the piston here after I'm done preheating. I'm taking the side that has the red ring and placing it on top of the filter basket. Very important. And you can see here, there's the max fill line for the water. It's pretty faint. And then we place it on the base. All right, so steps 12, 13, and 14 are fairly straightforward. And you're going to fill your cylinder to the line with boiling water, insert your piston into said cylinder, and then press down on the lever to start brewing. So adding boiling water here up to the fill line, making sure you don't cross that fill line. And then if you have a stainless steel piston, you should have preheated that already, but in this case I don't. So I'm just gonna insert that carefully into the top, reattach the portafilter to the base, and then carefully press. So you can see that I'm holding onto the base here, just in case I apply too much pressure and the flare for whatever reason tilts to one side and makes a disastrous mess. Hasn't happened yet, but I think it is definitely possible. So don't apply too much pressure here. You wanna be very careful to kind of get in that targeted range of pressure that they recommend in the booklet. So I believe it was 30 to 45 pounds. And you can see the final shot here. Okay, so let's talk about what I like and dislike about the flare. In other words, pros and cons, my subjective pros and cons. So first off, let's start with what I like, the looks of the flare. Hands down, one of the prettiest pieces of copy equipment I have had the pleasure of owning. And I think, you know, the simplicity and the design really speaks volumes to its elegant looks. And I think it looks great in chrome and also great in black. Personally, I prefer the chrome version, but I think you can't go wrong either way. Flair is bound to get some compliments from your guests if you choose to make them some espresso. Of course, as we'll talk about later when I discuss cons, it's not necessarily the most convenient way to make espresso. The second thing I like about the Flair is the espresso quality itself. I've been able to pull some excellent shots with this. And of course, we don't want to count out my grinder and the water I'm using and the coffee I'm using because those are obviously important variables in the espresso equation. But with all of that being solid, the flare is able to deliver shots that I would say are comparable to that of a much more expensive and potentially commercial espresso machine. So no electricity, no pumps, just simple manual pressure and you're able to get some excellent quality shots. So in terms of the espresso quality itself, the flare is up there with some of the much more expensive competition. Third thing I like is that I expect the flare to last me a very long time. And the reason I expect that is because there aren't all those complicated electronic components or pumps, as I mentioned. 
you have access to all of the inner organs of the flare right under your nose and all of the parts are replaceable. So assuming that there is some wear and tear over time, I won't have to be spending hundreds of dollars to replace expensive parts and instead can quickly go to Flare's website and replace the parts that way. Okay, so let's talk cons. The first one that I'm just gonna have to address right off the bat here is price. At $200 plus, this is not a cheap espresso maker, especially in relative terms when compared to other manual espresso makers on the market. Now, as I said before, I think the quality of the espresso justifies the extra costs as well as the fact that this is definitely a product that is built to last. So I think in terms of value, Flare definitely has something going for it. But if you're just basing it off of price and what it does, it is quite expensive. My second issue with the Flare is how many damn parts there are. It seems like they're all necessary, but at the same time, it just makes things easier to lose. I use a drying rack. I don't have a fancy dishwasher. And the problem with this is that it's just a little bit cumbersome to manage all the different parts, uh, especially when cleaning things up and putting things back in the case. So minor complaint there. And you know, all the parts I think kind of play into the next downside, which is that it's kind of a complicated process, at least the first few times that you go through with it. And I have to kind of criticize the instruction book because one of the key steps, which was basically preheating the cylinder, was kind of sloppy the way they described how to do it. I mean, I, I don't see, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't see how you can really effectively preheat the cylinder based on the way that they describe it in the instruction booklet. I had to use the piston to get any kind of, you know, stoppage, if you will. So there was no water leaking through the cylinder. And that kind of was annoying. So it was definitely fussy to work with. As James Hoffman said in his review, his excellent review, check out his channel if you don't already. But, um, yeah, the, the overall process I think is a little bit cumbersome along with all of the parts, but you do get the hang of it, or at least I was able to get the hang of it after a while. So it's not gonna be for somebody that just wants to hop in and start making espresso quickly nor easily. So there's still a lot I haven't talked about here, but in the interest of everybody's time, I'm gonna wrap up this review right now and encourage you to check out the written review where I actually break down the difference in all of the flare models that are currently out there. So definitely check that out if you're a little bit confused about all the different options. I know I was when I was purchasing the Signature Plus. I had actually intended to purchase the Signature Pro, which has all stainless steel parts as well as a pressure gauge. So in the end, I am loving my flare. But what you have to know is that it definitely isn't for everyone. It is for a niche kind of specialty coffee enthusiast market. You should probably enjoy espresso straight if you're going to even consider a machine like this. Uh, if you can even call it a machine, that is. And secondly, I mean, it, it's, it's going to take a little bit of practice and a little bit of patience. So if you go in with those expectations, chances are you'll probably be satisfied. But if you're expecting a quick way to start making lattes and mochas and espresso-based drinks at home, uh, I, I gotta say, I would focus on your grinder first and foremost, and then think about maybe an easier machine. So thanks so much for watching, and if you've used the Flare or if you own the Flare, please leave a review in the comments section below or in the written post. And as always, questions are always welcome.